Hello and welcome to News Click. Here's another episode of the Daily Roundup, in which you'll get a glimpse into some of the news stories that News Click is covering. So here's a look at the top stories from the day. It comes as no surprise that the main accused named in the FIR lodged by the UP police in response to the violence that erupted near Bulansher are from the Bajrang Dal, Vishwa Hindu Parishad and the BJP. The police has also registered a case against 88 persons of whom 25 are yet to be named. The violence that erupted in Bulansher claimed the life of a 22-year-old student and Inspector Subodh Kumar. These incidences of mob violence by members of Hindutva groups are on the rise. They raise some very serious questions about the deteriorating state of law and order in Uttar Pradesh. In December 2013, the BJP swept the assembly elections in Rajasthan, winning as many as 163 seats in the 200-member assembly. Let's take a look at BJP's performance in the state over the past five years. Farmers have been severely impacted by the unchecked increases in prices of essential inputs such as electricity, diesel, seeds, fertilizers, pesticides, etc. The refusal to either hike or add to the minimum support prices has allowed big farmers to drive down prices, leaving the smaller farmers at a loss. Between January 2015 and August 2018, the per-day wages of agricultural workers increased from Rs. 278 to Rs. 291 for men and Rs. 202 to Rs. 254 for women. That's a rise of a mere 4.5% over three years. The wages for the industrial workers is among the lowest in the country. The minimum wage, as recommended for central government employees, is calculated at Rs. 18,000. The minimum wage for an unskilled worker is Rs 5,798. For a semi-skilled worker, it is Rs 6,058. And for a highly skilled worker, it stands at somewhere around 7,358. The unemployment rate in Rajasthan has reached 55%. Even among graduates, it is 21%, according to the Centre for Monitoring Indian Economy. The state government has also raked up an enormous debt as for RBI, and most of this debt is owed to the bank. Yet, increased liabilities have not translated to better lives for the farmers or for the workers of Rajasthan. Now, on to some more depressing news about the deteriorating air quality in the capital, New Delhi. The NGT, or the National Green Tribunal, has slapped a fine of Rs 25 crore on the Delhi government for failing to curb pollution in the city. The Central Pollution Control Board recorded an overall air quality index, that's the AQI of 352, which falls in the very poor category. The PM 2.5 level was recorded at 155 and the PM 10 level at 328. An AQI of 0 to 50 is considered good, 51 to 100 satisfactory, 101 to 200 moderate, 201 to 300 poor, 301 to 400 very poor and 401 to 500 severe. Will this 25 crore fine have any on-ground implications for the citizens of Delhi? Can a fine really improve the air quality in the city? And finally, some news from the world of science. Last week, He Jinghui, a Chinese scientist, claimed that he was able to do gene modification in the genomes of two twin baby girls aimed at making them resistant to HIV infection. The alterations made in the genomes would have the capacity to get passed on to the future generations. The claim is yet to appear as a scientific patent and has incited sharp criticism from scientists and bioethnicists. The Chinese Society for Cell Biology has also issued a statement 
declaring that the research is a serious violation of the Chinese government's law and regulations and the consensus of the Chinese scientific community. From the point of view of justice and equity, there is also the concern that genome editing will be accessible only to a small wealthy section and that in turn will only increase the existing disparities in healthcare and intervention. That's all we have for you in today's Daily Roundup. For the latest news, do log on to our website www.newsclick.in. You can also visit our YouTube channel and log on to our Facebook page for more videos.